you read our Declaration of Independence, says there are certain alienable rights that are given to man by God. We are taking God out of the equation. Like I remember reading a story the other day, and it says this child, his school was shot up by another student. And he got on his knees and he prays to God, why did you allow my school to get hurt? And he said, my son, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed in your school. We have rejected God. It says that in the last days that he will turn a deaf ear to the cries of the people, not his children, but to the world. We're coming to that time now where we've rejected God, we've pushed God, we don't want God, God get out. God's getting out. All right, you want to have it. And I guarantee you, it's not going to be pretty before it's over. But for us to endure to the end, he says, we will be saved. We're about verse 12 on here. Verse 12. And except that the Lord has shortened the days, those days no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, here, here he is there, believe him not. For false Christ and false prophets shall arise, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all these things. Why did Jesus tell these things? He did not tell us these things to scare the holy living daylights out of us. That was not his intention. He told us this, that as the watchman, as the prophet uh, Ezekiel says, is standing on the tower watching for the enemy, that we as the church should be watching for the enemy, we will know when these things be, start happening. We'll recognize them like an army marching into battle. And then we can sound the warning. Today is the day for the church to get up and sound the warning. The shepherds are sleeping while the sheep are being eaten. The crops are withering. It's not hard if you're from southwest Missouri like us right here. Or even in Texas right now. God love them. They're worse than we are. Mm -hmm. Take a drive out in the country and look at the crop wither. God love the farmers. They've done all they could. But the weather is beating them down. Right now in the world, the church is a crop. The harvest is ready. But the farmers aren't going out and harvesting the spiritual harvest. Yeah, we may have sprinkled a little water here and there. Man, as long as they put the money in the plate, let the sun get down on them. We're not here for money. We're not here for praise of men. We're here to please God. Amen. And behold, if we don't right now get up off our butts and awaken from our slumber, sound that warning, harvest that crop, it's going to weather. Right. It says right there, like we said in the beginning of our word, that the ones that the lights are going out, five virgins. The lights are going out in the church. It's up to us to get up and give them their oil back in their lamp. Shine the light into the world. Jesus said, a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do you light a candle and put it under a bushel. But you give light to the entire room, that it not be dark, but be light. The church, when we're worried about standing underneath our lofty steeple, and we're too quick to judge the horse sitting outside of our, court, our steps instead of going to speak to her and seeing what the problem be, we have that blood on our hands, we're putting a lamp or a bushel over our lamp. Amen. We have got to get out and shine the light. We've got to get out and share the word. If there is anything I could urge today more, I could not urge it more than to actively evangelize. That's the word. Amen. Get out. Knock on the door. Stand on the street corner. Oh man, I'll tell you, I have catched all kinds of all living fire and brimstone of hell from other shepherds for going into a bar. I go in there and get drunk? No. Yeah. Go to the casino. I've been reproached by my ex-wife for that. Well, we don't go into casinos. And I said, well, that's fine. Stand under your lofty steeple. That's your thing. I'm not going there to gamble. I don't believe in gamble. I ain't got the money to gamble. I'm going there to reach the lost. I'm not saying gambling is necessarily sin. I'm saying, though, there are other sins lying around these institutions. You go out and shine the, the show them here, hey, they see this light in the darkness, oh my God, why is he here? Because you're my brother and my sister, and I love you. You're my God's creation. But you don't know me, how can you love me? Well, same again, by Christ knew me and loved me, though I never knew him, but now I know him. Same as that, I'm coming out and loving you as he loved me. We go on down here, verse 24, but in those days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We just heard, probably a month ago, of the solar flares happening on the sun, and NASA is now saying that it's possible for our lifetime the sun could go out. They don't understand these solar flares. You know why they don't understand it? They don't understand God. They've taken God out. Man thinks he knows it all. Well, God's going to give man all that he thinks he knows. They found a new star the other day made of diamond that they say within this lifetime could penetrate the Earth's soil. This star is so large, they say it could cause catastrophic damage to the planet. Well, I'm saying everything here, but the Lord told us it's going to happen. It's, it's very possible. It's happening. I believe him. I take him in his very word. And, so, and, and then shall they see the Son of Man 
shining in the clouds of great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the winds, from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When her branch is tender and it put forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man shall hear me and open up, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. The Lord is standing at our spiritual door and knocking. He is standing at our earthly, worldly, physical door and knocking. Is the church going to get up and do its job? He said, go forth into the world, preach my gospel, and make disciples of men. We're not making disciples of men because we're not disciples ourselves. We're sitting around hiding. I know the brother right back here, he made credit. He gets out here and he gets to preaching. He may not, he don't have to have no big fancy license or a tie or a church. Just in the corner. Right. My brother is up here and all his faults. He's got his faults. We all know he does. Can I pray to start preaching to God? He felt, felt by the Spirit that while he's writing his bike to kind of speak to God. God. He said, I didn't care if everybody's here or not. I'm speaking to the Lord. Praise God. Well, some kids and some parents came in and decided to hear him. Praise the Lord, the gospel was shared. Me and my wife not bragging ourselves up, not trying to brag on that. We go out and we share the word. Amen. We are to be examples to our fellow man. So if, not to brag ourselves up here, but to show those listening at home, examples. do as us. Do as we have learned from the apostles. The apostles learned it from Jesus. We learn it from them. So therefore we are living in him. When we do his will, he taught them and they taught us. Therefore we glorify the Father through him and doing his will. He never did nothing on his own accord. He never said he did. He said, I only do what the Father has told me. I do what I have heard of the Father. I say what I have seen of the Father. He was a witness to the Father. Whew, man, I love the Lord. Praise the Lord. Verily I say unto you that this generation shall not pass till all of these things be done. Now people, a lot of times here on verse 30 alone, try to discount the entire gospel. But that generation has been passed. It's a spiritual generation. He's saying that my church shall not pass until these things come to pass. And he's not saying the generation of this set of people will be 70 years old and die. He's not saying that. He's saying that my church, my word, my will, the things I've said, the things I've set up, my foundation will still be there when these things come to pass. We will be a witness to these times of what is happening. We are their light and their only hope because we shine the light of the Lord. He is their hope. <clears throat> 31. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, either the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as, as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his word, and had commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or in the morning, let less coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watch. We had the earthquake in Japan this year. Not counting one a few years ago in Sri Lanka. Caused a massive tsunami. Hundreds of thousands dead and missing. They'll never be claimed again. They'll never be seen. We'll be in glory but by us. They'll never be seen. Had an earthquake in Washington, D.C. along a fault line we didn't even know existed. The tornado in Joplin. The tornado in Joplin. That was a disaster of biblical proportions. That's not your normal tornado. I mean, yeah, tornadoes and big F5s, they come and they tear things down. They don't level reinforced brick buildings that were set in stone 50, 60, 70 years ago, deep, 20, 30 foot down. Rhythm. They don't take nine story hospitals and move them four inches to the east. That's not a tornado. That is the Lord God speaking. Entire towns, not just shopping, wiped off the map. The same day, Minnesota, Minneapolis, a downtown metropolitan area was hit. We're seeing floods in the Mississippi River. Man, she's a flood like we ain't seen before. It's called a hundred year flood. I call it a lifetime flood. We got these hurricanes, Katrina, Irene now. Irene, at one time, two nights ago, was 400 miles wide. The very next evening, 10 o'clock news, she was 700 miles wide. By 7 a.m. the next morning, she was 1,200 miles wide. Folks, these aren't our normal storms, these aren't our normal times. We got droughts in Texas, we got floods in the north and the northern Mississippi is flooding out the crops in North Dakota and South Dakota and Iowa. But they say there can't be a worldwide plague. 
Did you know that most of the food coming into the U.S. coming into the world comes from the United States of America? We go hungry, the world goes hungry. You've got a worldwide problem. We're seeing these little babies over here in Africa starving to death, and I'll tell you that breaks my heart. We got kids right here in America that are looked over that are starving to death. Mom and Dad can't do no better. They're doing the best they can. I'll give no examples. I know what you're thinking, but you're not going to mention no names. This is not fair. We've got to, as a church, start reaching our fellow man. He says, watch ye and pray. Our problem as a church is we can't go out and speak to others if God don't speak to us. If we're not inclining our ears to wisdom, then how are we going to incline our hearts to Him? We've got to seek Him first. It says that the greatest command is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy might. And we're to love our neighbors ourselves. What is so hard about that? Jesus was very right when he said that the entire word and all the prophets are summed up in that. If you love your fellow man, how can you hate? If you don't hate, how can you kill? If you don't kill, how can you destroy? If you don't destroy, how can you steal? Because when you steal a life, you're stealing from someone else. Where you're thinking hard, you act or you do it, it's being done. That's the point. Today I would just ask, I've got much more to say here, but I have fun to split it up here. I would ask that everybody hearing this at home, everybody here today, that we could divide just a little more time. The Lord gives us 24 hours in a day. He asked for our first fruits, not our gleanings. That is why Cain was cursed. Not because he didn't love Cain or he had it out for Cain. Cain was smart of it. Cain gave him what was left. Cain didn't want to give him the best of what he had. I'm not talking financially. I'm asking that we take spiritually from ourselves. Take 30 minutes a day. Break it up into 15 intervals. I don't care how you do it. Take 30 minutes a day this week. And after you do it this week, carry it on the next. And just pray for our fellow men. Pray for the lost. Pray for the drunks. Pray for the hookers. Pray for the drug addicts. Pray for the kids at school who are hating their brother. Pray for the Mexicans hating the blacks and the blacks hating the whites. Pray for all races. Pray for this world. Pray for God's creation. Pray for believers. Pray for non-believers. I'm going to issue the hardest thing coming up here on September 11th. I want us to pray for the terrorists that attacked us. That's perfect love and unity. Let the Lord do the judging. Yeah, that's really easy. I'll tell you, I could thump a few. That's really easy. That's my carnal self. But my spiritual self says pray for my fellow man. I ask this week, before I close here, that we all pray. And before I close off here totally, I want to know, Brother Wayne, would you like to close this in prayer today? Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today, be in your presence, Lord. We pray that the word that was spoken, Lord, will be edified, Lord, and not be just heard, but be acted upon, Lord, and your will be done. Take me with those around us, Lord, that have needs, Lord, that we do not even know the needs, or maybe we know part of it, but not all of it, Lord, that only you can take care of, whether it be physical, mental, whether it be financial, Lord, or whether it be spiritual, Lord. Sometimes we forget that it's the spiritual things, Lord, that really matter. Yes, Jesus. Lord, take and as we take and go to our hallows, Lord, and as the word goes forth, Lord, through, through different medias and stuff, Lord, we pray that it not go void, but go unto you answer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Praise be to God. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, folks at home, for watching. And I pray that you'll be back next week. And I pray that we'll tune in next week for the rest of it. Amen.